Welcome one and all to patch 5.0, and I know a lot of you probably thought I would start with the Empire, but in terms of free LC stuff, the Dwarfs actually probably have the most significant reworks. You see already one of the big additions to them. Ulrika here, as an actual caster, can be taken by the Dwarfs in custom multiplayer battles. Uh, that also, the biggest change by far is to gyros. You see them out in the distance. Yes, there's only two units of them, but there's many models of them. And they're brimstone guns, which are completely different now. They are officially actual flamethrowers. Great for clearing chaff. Lack the anti-large kind of torpedoes that they were before. Uh, yeah, they are now completely different, so we're going to be trying them out. We've also got flame cannons, which again have been changed. Instead of being fireball launchers, they are also now long-range flamethrowers. And we've got some actual flamethrowers. Uh, basically, all flamethrowers now have a somewhat of an arc of fire, so they can actually fire over things. Uh, that also does benefit someone like warp fire throwers for the Skaven as well. But for this free LC battle, we're going to be up against the free LC Lord, Epidemius, who is basically like a melee demon support lord. Uh, he's got an interesting ability kit, not wildly useful, uh, but he does have this palette, Tally of Pestilence, which is a nice AoE buff only for demonic units. Uh, also, this uh, Epidemic Outburst here, which will give the Contagious Lethargy Contact buff, uh, if he can get in contact with it. <clears throat> That they can slow it down. The rest of the Nurgle army you've all seen before. It's just a bunch of demons. We've got plague drones, plague toads, plague bears, uh, Nurglings, a uh, plague ridden uh, for the casters since Epidemius is not a caster. Got a great unclean one as well, and uh, some more drones, plague toads here out on the side. The drones are definitely going to be a tough draw for my gyros since I don't really have much mid range skirmish that can protect the gyros. Uh, basically just gonna have to try and run around but yeah you see the flame cannon already opening up in the sky there not really gonna do a ton of damage to these larger units uh up in the sky yeah you can see it hits the plague drone there it doesn't really do much but then once it starts to hit this plague bear I mean, even still the damage is decent i don't know if it's necessarily better than it was before per se but definitely different and depending on the contact it does make can do a lot of damage certainly See the Plague Bears being hit by it there. Blasting charges going off on the far side. Iron Drakes firing up and into the air at the Plague Drones as they kind of pursue around the uh, the gyros a little bit there. So, yeah, but you can see that as they fire in the Flame Cannon again, once it starts to get contact on these chaff units, does a lot of damage. Ulrika throwing a nice bit of shades there as Gautrek and Ungrim honoring the slayers of the upcoming DLC. They're going to get in here and force a nice blob. Epidemius then charges on in on his chair. <coughs> oh, that's not Epidemius. It's actually just the plague ridden. Epidemius is over here. I'm trying to get into the front line. But uh, let's see. Yeah, I do get some gyros momentarily free here so we can admire their new shooting attack as they fire into the back here. Blasting charges going off as well. And oh yeah, a nice hot roast. Just firing into the back of the Plague Bears there. See, doing massive damage when I pull the health bars back up. That shot didn't necessarily do as massive damage, but still. Been able to help clear out some of this chaff, which has certainly been quite helpful. I will say, some matchups more than others, I think the new gyros uh, will definitely be beneficial. We'll look at the steam guns and the gyro bombers on another replay as well. But for today, you can see here the plague toads are able to get back and get into my uh, flame cannon and shut them down very quickly. These Norgrumlings iron breakers are not doing uh, what I want them to. I actually gave them an order to throw their blasting charges here, but I think because the toads are within minimum range, it's kind of bugging out right now. It's not really working properly. I do have Gautrek matched on the plague ridden though. And Iron Drake, or uh, Ungrim rather, on the Great Unclean ones. So, single entity fight's going okay for now. The grind fight will sort of slowly go in Nurgle's favor. I've just got mostly miners and such, so it's not really like I've got a lot of melee power here necessarily. Mostly just the ability to, to try and stick around while the gyros and other things do the work. That was the thinking at least. But of course, gyros being worked <clears throat> by the plague drones. Definitely painful experience for me. Ulrika also running around uh, using her Pit of Shades. Another one going to be unleashed here on these Plague Bears. She herself also being an anti-large mobile character with a spear, obviously, and a bow. Gives her a lot of hybrid utility in this matchup. She can run around, help support against enemy big single entities, which is exactly what she's going to do here with Ungrim 
try and rear charge into the Great Unclean one together. Maybe get a little bombing run from the Gyros, perhaps? No, just repositioning. Of course, the bombs individually do less damage, but they do cover a much broader area now that the Gyros have much more unit models. <clears throat> just going to con continue fleeing from the Plague Drones. Gautrek has matched up 2v1 here against Plague Ridden and Epidemius, which is not ideal. He's going to end up taking a lot of damage here. He's also going to dish a lot of damage in return, but... Yeah, the character fights here going to be pretty important, obviously. As Okoy, my opponent, the legend himself, is... Uh, Continuing to fight here. Gotta love the Iron Drakes, point blank, just flaming into the <laughs> Plague Bears and the Toads, trying to inundate them. I'm trying my best to keep the uh, Iron Drakes firing for as long as possible, just because I need them to clear out the rest of this uh, chaff stuff here. You can see a little bit of damage from the Gyros coming in. Their accuracy is not like 100%, especially out towards the edge of their range, but certainly can still get some work done, even with just, just a handful of unit models remaining. That burnt contact effect, especially on le uh, demonic units, obviously. If I can get their leadership to disintegrate, would be quite beneficial, but... Yeah, Plague Groans moving in to swarm Ulrica once more. My infantry on this side finally giving out as the Nurgle forces grind through. Still got these Norgrimlings Ironbreakers, though, so I'm pretty happy about that. <clears throat> as long as I can keep them alive, at least some of my uh, heroic leadership core... Feeling pretty good about possibly mounting and come back. A little bit behind on the balance power right now, but that's okay. Let's see the Great Unclean One once again pursuing Iron Drakes as they try and roast out what's left of the Plague Bears there alongside the uh, Flying Gyros remaining. Norgrimlings throwing what remains there, blasting charges into this blob here. Going to be doing some nice damage overall. Meanwhile, Plague Drone swarm in on Ulrika. Again, her spear is going to benefit her greatly. Even Melkos mystifying the asthma as well, just to deal a little bit of extra damage to the Plague Drones over time. Definitely will be helpful. The Pit of Shades going to be unleashed here as the Plague Bears make their way up through. Some people aren't going to like the addition of Ulrika, and certainly no one's saying you have to use it. You can always just use Rune Magic or no magic at all if you want to be a proper dwarf, but... For competitive multiplayer and from a kind of gameplay mechanics perspective, for me, as someone who enjoys more mobile and dynamic units, <clears throat> having such a mobile and dynamic caster as a hero definitely just brings a lot of fresh gameplay opportunities to the dwarves. And I'm sure, you know, later on down the line, uh, we're going to be sick of seeing Ulrika alongside the dwarves because it's probably going to be the only caster you bring. I mean, granted, Brood Magic you might still bring on occasion as she gets absolutely pooped on by the great unclean one here. Um, but Lord of Shadows is just so good. And Rune Magic is not great in comparison. It's one of the worst lures of magic, if you want to call it that. Um, uh, Ulrika, on the other hand, again, anti-large character. She's got a lot of great abilities and tools. You can kind of kit her up or down as needed. What am I, so, am I saying she's anti-large? Why did I, Why was I saying she's anti-large this whole time? She's anti-infantry. Okay. <laughs> I was thinking of uh, the hybrid elf characters who actually have, like, spears and bows. But no, she's anti-infantry. But even still, I mean, 450 weapon strength, 50 attack, 46 defense. She's got the hunger as well. So in a, a situation like this where she's potentially going to have to grind out a long late game against... Some enemies here uh, could potentially work out in her favor. But, yeah, just her helping against these Plague Drones. You know, that single entity weapon strength. The fact she doesn't get staggered and knocked around. One of the great things about Plague Drones is their animations send enemy infantry models scattering. So, like, if they were to move in on the Norgrimlings, Norgrimlings aren't going to really do much to oppose them. Uh, just because, yeah, the uh, Norgrimlings models are going to be tossed constantly and won't be able to get set and actually fight. But... Column of Iron Drakes once again moving into position. Akoi probably very frustrated that he couldn't actually finish them off and finish shutting them down, but uh, some nice fire blanketing Epidemius there. These Plague Bears as well. Now, the Iron Drakes, as you'll see here, aren't the best shooting at large targets. Flamethrowers in general are much more meant for anti infantry, but they are great at anti infantry. They're going to do some damage to the Great Unclean One, but it's just not going to be spectacular. Um. There, Ulrika charging into the back of the Plague Ridden there. Just a quick hit and run to kind of interrupt him. And then move on to try and finish the Plague Drones. Little Melkos mystifying the asthma on those Plague Bears. Trying to finish them off. 
even though I probably should have used that on the Plague Drones. Even though the Plague Drones isn't going to be as efficient on the damage scaling, they don't have quite enough unit models to make it 100% worth it. Still, just every little bit helps against a unit like this, where I really don't have a lot of ways to respond against them. But uh, we're going to fast forward a little bit through this late game as Ulrika <coughs> fights the Plague Drones to try and save the Iron Drakes. Ungrim actually gets killed here, uh, 3v1 on this single entity fight, which is not overly surprising, but still, probably a big mistake on my part if I've been able to maybe have him and Ulrika fight th uh, 2v3 or something. It definitely would have had different impact, but Ulrika right now, trying her best to save the Iron Drakes, is not able to. Again, unsuccessful. So, hindsight 2020, should have just kept her with Ungrim to fight in this single entity fight and keep cycle charging while the Norgrimling's Iron Breakers have these guys all just pinned here. Um, of course, I mean, the Great Unclean One and the others could try and get away from the Norgrimling's Iron Breakers and chase Ulrika, but they're so slow, it might as well just stand and fight for the time being. But uh, Ulrika eventually does get tangled up in this final engagement between the Plague Drones. Plague Ridden. It's a little bit hard to see what's going on in there, but uh, Ulrika on her horse is actually holding out okay. She's uh, regenerating quite a bit of HP, taking quite a bit of damage too. Must be said, uh, with the new UI update, you can actually see healing rate, current healing rate, and the healing power. Of course, if there's any like fire effects or anything nerfing the healing power, that will show there. Also shows you the actual healing cap, like number. So, yeah, interesting. Very interesting. Love that little UI tweak, just to make things a little bit easier to read, especially if you mouse over. Uh, I didn't really highlight it too much, but the Plague Ridden, you can see already from his little green confetti that he is uh, suffering from sadness and is going to demonically crumble there as he falls in his chair. One single entity down, another two remain, but unfortunately uh, the Norgrimling's Iron Breakers are starting to run out of steam, as is Ulrika. She's getting very close to her healing cap. And it's going to now be 2v1 versus the Great Unclean One and Epidemius, who is himself a very decent combatant. 59 melee defense, a dank 420 weapon strength. So, yeah, then Ulri it's Ulrika's turn to have confetti pop out of her face and to crumble, of course. And there it is. That's going to be the end. So, a narrow defeat to Okoy. It must be said, I was, I was obviously trying to <laughs> just take a lot of the reworked stuff in this particular build so it's i mean not by any means meta builds on either sides uh, especially with the dlc coming i'd imagine this will change quite a bit a great unclean one normally would be extremely risky against the dwarfs but because i went with the flamethrower build without more traditional missiles and didn't end up having a good answer for him and uh, i definitely would say this is too far in that direction but overall the flamer units are pretty decent and you shouldn't take this one replay as absolute gospel uh, even though they didn't pay for themselves here, mostly that's due to my own kind of misuse. The Iron Drakes got pretty close, but uh, yeah, I do think... <clears throat> show you guys some replays in the future. I do think the Flame Gyros will be useful in a number of matchups. This one's a little bit tough because Nurgle actually does have some decent flying tools that can kind of counteract you in the sky, as we saw. Um, but the Flame Cannon's an interesting one. I'm still not 100% sold on this. I think... I don't know. I maybe need some tweaks. Maybe need some more games to evaluate what tweaks need to be made. I'm not sure. But uh, the rest is fine. I mean, Gotrek and Ungrim both pay for themselves since they don't have any abilities or skills uh, brought in this battle. They're both quite cheap and are able to pay for them, their value back fighting those big targets. But uh, wasn't quite enough at the end of the day, uh, tactically, to do what they needed to. Ulrich, on the other hand, uh, 28,000 damage value, 2,700 damage gold. Uh, a value as gold. Um, yeah, 120 kills total. Just awesome. More shadows. Pretty much said everything needs to be said. Not anti-large, anti-infantry. I don't know why I was so confused, but that's okay. Uh, <laughs> More Grimlings Iron Breakers also get massive value in that grind fest. No surprise. Uh, for Epidemius, yeah, pretty good value on him. Um, overall, fairly solid abilities set. Um, we'll probably take a deeper dive into his ability set on another day when I can show you the full menu and everything, but still, he uh, seems okay, not meta-defining by any means, but just fine, which I think is perfect for a free LC Lord. Um, then the Plague Ridden, of course, is here also. Yeah, Great Unclean One gets some great value. Plague Drones have an absolute ball chasing down the Gyros, but, uh, yeah, the rest of the build just gets flamed out, unsurprisingly, except for the one Toad that... Runs down the flame cannon and gets like a thousand damage value 
as a result, or 1200 rather. So, very interesting stuff. A fun one for sure. Hopefully, you guys enjoyed that. I'm going to have lots more replays coming in the next week or so, showcasing some more reworks, uh, reworked stuff like the Steam Tank. We'll look at some of the other gyros, uh, the bomber and the steam gun and everything else. So, definitely stay tuned for that. Uh, got more coming, so don't go anywhere. Subscribe if you want more of this. Be sure to like the video, share it with a friend if you find it informative, useful, entertaining, any of that. Uh, thank you once again for watching. We'll see you next time.